Hi everyone and welcome to this video. Last time we have been discussing a little bit about built-in functions and in particular we have been focusing on mathematical functions like uh, integer, square root, sinus, cosinus, this sort of things. And we also have introduced string functions which are essentially functions that operate on strings. And we have seen things like the length of the string, left dollar, right dollar to extract subscript, and etc. etc. So this time we are going to change subject and we are going to go into a different direction. And in particular, we are going to discuss routines, we are going to discuss functions, and all of these, of course, through concrete examples so that we can follow and understand. The new commands that are going to be introduced in this video are sub and sub function and function and call. Uh, if you want to see the previous video, um, the link is here, but it's also in the description below. And as always, I thank you all of you for subscribing, for leaving comments and for sharing these videos with others. Let's start with routines. So what are routines, why we should use them? And rather than going through abstract concepts, we are going to go through a very simple example so that we can understand what a routine is and how we can use that. So let's suppose that we have a for loop that goes from 1 to 10. And let's suppose that, for example, we want to print the value of i, but we also want to print the square of i. And then, since we want to make things slightly sophisticated, we want to have a particular format when we print these values. And let's suppose to make things very, very simple, that the format is the bunch of symbols that I am practically adding to the print command here. So this means that if we run this code, we are going to obtain uh, i and i square in the format that we want. But let's suppose now that things are different and we have another for loop that still go from 1 to 10. This is just an example. And let's say that this time we would like to print uh, i, but also the value of the square root of i. Uh, now, if we want to have the same format as the previous for loop, we are forced to do the following things. So, for example, here we have to add these, um, these symbols here, we have to add these further symbols here, and then eventually we have to add more symbols at the end. So this means that in practice we have to rewrite everything that we had in the previous uh, for loop. Now let's suppose that the format is actually much more complicated than this one. This would mean that for every for loop where we want to print uh, the results in a certain format, we would need every time to copy this format in every for next loop that we have here. Uh, that's why we want to use routines. So let's go at the end of the code here and define the routine. And the way we are going to define it is, is like this. We first use the command sub, which, go, which stands for subroutine. And we are going to close the routine here with the command and sub. But then we need to provide a name to the routine. And in this case, we are going to call it, for example, print format one and we have to tell what parameters the routine is going to need since here we are practically showing the value for an integer i and then we show here some result or let's say some computation that is performed over the index i we are going to pass two parameters here. The first one we are going to call it i for the index and the second one we are going to call it res for the result. And one thing that we can do is we can copy for example this part of the code here in here and what we print now is going to be i and res. So i and res are going to be two parameters that are 
passed through this interface here. Now we also have to modify the code so that we can use this uh, new, this new subroutine that we just defined. So the very first thing that we are going to do is the following. We are going to remove everything here and we are going to define uh, this variable rest that is equal to i times i since we are interested in uh, computing the square of the index i. And then we are going to call the routine which name is print format one and we are going to tell it what to print. So in this particular case here we want i and rest. In the very same way, we can proceed with the second for loop. So we are going to define a variable called uh, res. This time this is going to be square root of i. And then we are going to call exactly the same routine. So print format 1, i and res. To make things slightly more readable, we are also going to add a print here with an empty screen string so that we can see we can see a, a line that separates the results of the two for loops. So as you can see from this, this program here, it's very, very important and interesting to define subroutines. Why? Because first of all, um, it makes the code more readable. Uh, as you can see, I mean, now the format that you are using uh, to, to print things, uh, it's actually just one subroutine here. And in a way, you can think of this as a command, as a new command that has been defined. Uh, it's also very convenient to define routines because if for any reason at some point in the development of the code you want to change the format, let's say that you want to have two symbols here, you want two symbols here and you want only two symbols here, you just have to, de you just have to modify this routine here. There is no need for you to go in this for loop or in the other for loop. Everything is modified only once and that's all you need. Uh, it's again also another reason why it's important to define subroutines and to use them is that if you can define um, general routines like this one in practice now you have a library of subroutines that you can use for other codes for other programs but it also becomes a library of routines that other people can use as well. So it becomes very interesting because you can reutilize what you have defined. So now just to see how this code works, we are going to compile and run it. And as you can see, we have the results of the two for loops. Uh, in the first case, essentially, we have the square of every number uh, or let's say of every value for the index i. In the second case, we have the square root of every value of the index i. The format remains the same. The only thing that we have done is to define the subroutine that you see here. Everything else uh, can be done by just calling this, this subroutine that has been defined once and for all. Let's talk about functions now. So in the previous video, we discussed a little bit about built-in functions, which are functions that one can find already available in BASIC. Here, what we are trying to do is to define our own functions. And by functions here, we still mean one operation or a set of operation that is applied to an input to obtain an output. So to make things very, very uh, concrete, let's define an example. Let's say that we have a for loop that goes from one to 100 in steps of 10. And let's close this loop here. And let's pretend that this i here is essentially a temperature and this is a temperature in Fahrenheit. Now, let's suppose that we want to transform or we want to convert this, uh, this temperature from Fahrenheit to um, Celsius degrees. So one thing that we could do is the following. We could define a variable called Celsius and we could use the usual formula uh, that one needs to make the conversion, which is five Point zero times the temperature in Fahrenheit minus 32.0 
divided by 9.0. So now if we want to print this, we could for example show this, we could say okay temperature in Fahrenheit is this and temperature in Celsius is this. And if we run this code it's going to work and it's going to provide exactly what we want. But let's now suppose that we have a second loop. And in the second loop now we are going from let's say 200 to 300 in steps of 10 again and this time we are still interested in making the conversion uh, from Fahrenheit to, um, to uh, Celsius degrees. So we are going to do exactly the same thing as we did in the previous loop which is we have to use this formula here. So we have to convert the temperature uh, in the variable temp uh, in Celsius degree so we use this formula here exactly as before but as you can understand very quickly um, this line here and this line here they are essentially duplications of the same formula so can we do better than this and of course the answer is yes and but we have to define a new function so let's try to do this. So first of all, I want to add a little bit more uh, here so that when we run this code and we see uh, what it does, everything becomes clear. So we now need to define a new function. Uh, a function, of course, is different from a routine because a function provides an output value. So we are going to see how this is obtained. So first of all, we define the function by using the command function and we close the function by using the command and function. And just as routines, we have to provide a name. So we are going to call it convert for example, and we have to provide some parameters. In this particular case, the parameter is the temperature in Fahrenheit, and what we would like to do is practically to return the same temperature in Celsius. So one thing that we can do here, we are going to copy this formula here, and we are going to copy it in the function that we just defined and then we have to tell the function that Celsius becomes the output that we would like to, to, to visualize or to utilize. So the way we do this is that we use the name of the function, which in this particular case is convert, and we assign the value that is the output of the function. So by doing this, we now have a function that converts temperatures from Fahrenheit to Celsius degrees. So of course now we have to define, uh, we have to modify a little bit uh, the for loops and the way we are going to do this is in the following way. We can remove this formula now and what we can do here is rather than showing a Celsius, we are going to call this formula immediately just like this. And in the very same way we do this for the second for loop, so here we could do this thing convert temp and this is going to work uh, just to provide a slightly more sophisticated example in the second loop we are going to do something like this we are going to call the function convert but the output of this function is going to be now stored in a, in a variable and then we are going to print the value of the variable so as you can see here we are using uh, the function directly in the print command while here we are using the function to define a new variable and then we print the new variable. So if we now run this code this is what happens. And as you can see the formula has been applied for every uh, value of the temperature in Fahrenheit and it has been applied correctly. You can double check if you want uh, as an exercise. Um, so this concludes the part with the functions. Uh, this also concludes this video. Uh, as always thank you for watching and see you in the next video.